guys, this is Cody with Wrangler Star. I had a uh, I had a little clunk in the front end of my truck, and so I wasn't sure what it was. So, oftentimes I'll take it and have it diagnosed and find out you know what it is, and then uh, so I go in the right so I can fix it myself. Uh, I'm just not one to pay someone to do something that I could do myself, and I'm not afraid to take on a project, yeah, even if I haven't done it before with YouTube and the internet and uh, the ability to get books or whatever, a guy can educate himself and do uh, a lot of things you didn't think you could do and save yourself a ton of money. For example, I found out that the ball joints on my truck are bad. Well, I said, well, what would you charge to fix it? They told me it was going to be over $1,200. You know, and that's just not an option. $1,200, uh, if, you know, how long does it take to earn $1,200? Um, for a lot of guys, it take a couple weeks, you know, after taxes and all of that. And if it's something that you could do on a, on a one day, and maybe even if you did have to and spend uh, $100 in tools or borrow or rent tools, uh, you'd still come out way ahead. So, you know, I'll just take, I'll just take care of this myself. Um, I got a Chilton's manual and I and, uh, went and bought the parts myself. And I should be able to do the whole project for about $350. So that's a pretty good savings. So when you figure... You know less parts. You know by doing this yourself. You know a guy can make. You look at you make. You're making eight hundred dollars by doing this versus paying someone to do it. I couldn't find a lot of people. I couldn't find a good video showing how to replace ball joints in a heavy super duty truck, like a Ford F250, 350, 4550, like that. So I'll uh, I'll do one myself. So uh, hopefully, I know there's a lot of guys out there uh, that have Ford trucks like this and. This is something that uh, is not above the ability of, a, of your basic shade tree. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is remove the cotter pin and remove the steering tie rod from the steering knuckle. Once you get the steering rod loose, pry it up out of the knuckle. And now you can push this out of the way and you can turn this back and forth because you'll need to access the bolts for the rear hub. Now the next thing we're going to do is remove the brake caliper. Alright, once you take off the brakes that hold the cal brake caliper on, remove it and you can sit that right over here on top of the leaf spring. Don't let it hang under the weight of the line. Uh, make sure you prop it up somewhere like that and it'll stay right there. And now with that tie rod disconnected we can move this back and forth and we'll remove the the brake rotor. There's a heat shield right there. You can bend that up a little bit. And then we'll remove the ABS sensor if you are so equipped with that now you can remove the little keeper that holds the ABS line to the top of the knuckle that's just a little 5 16 bolt And now we can remove the ABS sensor and tuck that up out of the way. Now, we'll take out the hub on a Ford. You simply press this retainer ring in. And that's the only thing that retains the hub. So with a, a soft hammer, rubber, or dead blow hammer, work that couple times and that should there's an o-ring there's an o-ring that uh, is a little tight but that should come straight out just like that and here you have your hub assembly okay in, inside the hub assembly 
we're going to take your uh, split ring pliers. For those of you who don't know what those are, they look like this. And there's a small split ring in here. Carefully remove it. Make sure you keep it retained because it will fly away. And it's very important there are four washers in here to keep the order. You have the split ring, a metal washer, sometimes a little screwdriver with a hook on it's handy for fishing things out like that. You've got an octagon shaped fiber washer and then another metal washer. Make sure you keep those in order and uh, put them back in the same way. All right, so that completes the hub. So now what we're going to, or the, uh, the hub, this part of the hub, this is the hub bearing assembly. So now we'll remove the hub bearing assembly and that's gonna be bolted on from the back. So there'll be four bolts on the back side here. One, two, three, four, we'll take those off and remove the hub assembly. All right, so now we'll re remove the bolts that hold the hub, hub bearing assembly. Once the hub bearing bolts are removed, we'll remove the hub bearing. If you, for, in Oregon, they don't, we don't put anything on the roads, chemicals or salts or anything, so the, our vehicles don't corrode. But if you guys live in an area where they do that, this could be a real nightmare getting this part off. And there is uh, no simple way. Um, there are some tools, hub tamers that shops will have. I've even uh, taken a wedge, and a very pointed chisel, and driven it between the knuckle and the hub to try to free it up. But uh, most cases, if your car's not too old, a little bit of coaxing, uh, it should come off. Now this will come off with the, the heat shield and uh, there'll be a o-ring right here that we'll want to replace uh, or at least pay special attention that it's clean when it goes back in uh, on reassembly. Alright, so now uh, we have to remove the axle shaft. Alright, to remove the axle shaft I just take a hammer and a brass drift or a brass hammer and whack the back of that knuckle a few times and that will remove, you can remove this and remove the axle with great care and pay special attention that there is a seal right here and I'm going to reuse the seal because it looks like it's in good shape uh, but that can be replaced if need be. And pull the shaft out and set this aside and keep it clean. Now there's two nuts holding the knuckle on and the ball joints that we need to replace are here's the upper and the lower. We'll take this whole knuckle off, take it over to the bench, press, I'll show you how to press these out, press new ones in and then we'll reinstall. So we have a cotter pin up here with a castle nut. Straighten that out and remove these two nuts. Don't worry about tearing up the, this cotter pin. Uh, the new ball joint will come with, uh, it'll come with a new one. All right. So, the appropriate socket here. Let's see if we can't get this off of here. These typically aren't super tight, in my experience. Alright, now we'll do the lower one. You're going to need a big socket set to do this. And you know, I don't advocate the tools at Harbor Freight uh, for my primary set. However, for things like this, that if you're not making a living with them, and you just want to do your own wrenching, they'll work just fine. So whether it's you buy a, a nice big half inch kit, or uh, like this one, a three-quarter inch drive kit up to two inch. Uh, they're, uh, they're really not that expensive there and, and they seem, for occasional use, they seem to be fine. All right, now that the knuckle uh, bolts are loose, we are going to uh, 
try to get this thing off of here. Let me mention before I take this off, to tell whether you need ball joints on your vehicle, you need to get the, the weight off of the uh, tires and you can rock your tire back and forth. You know, right here, the passenger was much worse, but the driver side here, I can feel there's some loose, some play, especially in the top ball joint. And that is going to cause premature tire wear. It's going to not handle and break as well. And it's going to make a bunch of racket up front. It just needs to be, needs to be addressed. It can become a safety issue. So uh, let's get this thing off of here. I'll take a hammer. brass hammer and shock this and break this mechanical weld that forms between the metal. These are tapered joints on these and they uh, um, press together and over time they just become super tight so you need to break that, uh, that mechanical bond and shocking it is a good way to do that. Now because we're going to replace these ball joints here and we don't need to worry about marring the threads, we can tap on those too. All right, I got it loose now. All right, there is a little, uh, little adjuster caster nut, or I don't know what you call it, mechanics. You guys can give me the, put in the description what it is, but it's a, uh, will help with the alignment. We'll have to have this aligned by a professional shop and they can, I know they can use different sizes of these to adjust your caster or camera, I never remember what it is, but but uh, we'll leave that in there for now. So now we have the knuckle off, we'll take this in the, on the vise and press out these uh, these bad ball joints, which they are, definitely are. Knuckle in the vise, and here is where you're going to need a specialty tool, and that's going to be a uh, ball joint press. Now. Uh, you can buy something like this, it's decent quality, it's import, it's not snap-on obviously, but it's uh, for around $100. You can probably get something for half of that at Harbor Freight. Will it work on, yeah, it'll probably work just fine. Um, as I said, it's just not, not something I'm going to use very often. I'll probably use it just a handful of times my whole life, so I'm not going to get all wrapped up around uh, the quality on this particular part. And if you don't want to make the investment in it, you can rent one at any decent parts store. They'll rent that to you for just a few bucks, and that might be a better option even yet. Now, ball joints. We have our, our uh, lower and our upper. Uh, don't be tempted by buying budget ball joints. You're going to call there. Some parts stores, they're automatically going to quote you. They won't even ask you if you want the good ones or the bad ones. But you can get the China ball joints. They're going to run you 18 I think, $38. 18 and 38 is what the guy quoted me. They're junk. You'll get about a year out of them, and you'll be doing this all over again. So do yourself a favor and don't do it. Get a quality American-made ball joint. You should uh, be expecting to pay for uh, a lower about 75 and for an upper about 50 so uh, keep that in mind. So let's, uh, let's get the press set up and get to work. What I'm going to do is remove the snap ring. I said be careful with these things, they will fly away. It's not working out very good for me here, is it? All right, and you just disregard those. The new ball joint, or the ball, new one will come with a new snap ring. Now you can match these up. Obviously, you can see that which way this presses. There's a shoulder on here, and we're going to press away from the shoulder. So when we set up our clamp, uh, we'll be pressing the ball joint out this way. Now here's another perfect example when I'm always talking to you guys about you know, using your head and figuring things out uh, to save yourself some money. So when I got my ball joint press out here and started pressing, I realized that this collar was too short. Short, And what was happening was as I pressed, uh, this uh, tapered portion of the ball joint ran into this and then I'm squeezing the whole thing together, it wouldn't come out. So I called the part shop and asked them, you know, if I bring the knuckles in, what would you charge me to press the ball joints out and new ones in? And they told me 20 bucks a piece. Well, that's, that's 80 bucks. And I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to pay 80 bucks for that. I'm going to figure out a way to do it myself. So I went down to the steel yard, and for 75 cents, have my, got myself a piece of 3-inch uh, galvanized pipe, and cut it to length just a little bit longer, 
and now I'll put this on here and uh, with my clamp and problem solved. So I could have easily went there and just spent $80 for the same thing or uh, been a little bit creative and uh, had got the job done for 75 cents. All right. As you can see, the reason for this pipe, it's got to fit on the outside of the ball joint, is we need to be able to support the back of the clamp, and the, the old ball joint is actually just going to go in and, and fall into this cup right here. So it may take a pretty f a good amount of force to get that to break free, but uh, once it does, you should be able to see it. You should be able to press in there, no problem. And this is going to be on the larger side of anything you're ever going to do. If you have a smaller car or truck, uh, you'll have nothing near this size. It'll be uh, easier. Here we go. Wow. Okay, here's our old one. You can see here that it's pretty rusty and, and it's got some play in it. Not bad. Here's the other side. You can see right here. See how bad that is right there? That shouldn't be. A, you shouldn't be able to have any movement in there. You can see the new one is tight. All right, let's get set up and we'll push out the bottom one. Clamp is set up. Make sure you do this in the order that I'm doing this. You do the bottom one first and then the top because you'll see you'll need this opening to access uh, to get the, the clamp so it can fit through. It won't work the other way. So everything on here, be sure, and I'm no safety Sally, but be sure that you wear safety glasses when you are using anything like a press or uh, a clamp like this. There's it, tremendous force on this stuff and, and uh, you could lose an eye. There, you heard that snap. It came out quite a bit easier than the other one did. My uh, 75 cent Pipe mod right there is really working out good. Be happy with that. I mean, yeah, you pay the 80 bucks and have someone let and press these out, and then you've got what are you gonna lose? You got to leave it there a couple hours, and you know, like I said, how long does it take to? How long does it take to make the make up that eighty dollars that you just paid someone to do something that with a little ingenuity you can do yourself? So let's get set up and we'll uh, press these uh, new ones back in in uh, the same order we took them out, just in reverse. Make sure you clean out the seats here where the new joint is going to come in, where the shoulders are set. Uh, there's always little dirt and stuff in there. You can see the new ball joint. You can see that the teeth cut in that and then obviously the shoulder what we'll press up against with those teeth will keep that from coming out and, and just cause that to seat uh, nice and tight. Get that started and press it in. Everything set up so now we'll press in our the upper. Going in nice. All right. Now there's no keeper on the upper, so we'll just press it in until it hits the shoulder, shoulder seats. Right. Looks good. Press in the lower. Felt that seat. Let's check it out.
Looks good, huh? Two nice shiny ball joints. I like the looks of that. All right, they provided us with a new snap ring, so we'll use that. Make sure that that's seated in there and looks good. Now we'll install the boots. I don't know why the factory often puts in uh, the ball joints that doesn't, don't have grease certs. What a grease cert is is a, these little guys here that you can uh, gives you the ability to add grease when you lube and oil your chassis. Um, I don't know why. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, but good quality ones will come with them. So now we'll, is a good time we'll install these. And if we grease these every time we change our oil, we'll get a lot longer life out of these. Now what I realized on the other one, you can see right here it came with a, a little elbowed or a 90 degree joint. I installed it, but it would not clear the drive shaft, or the, the, the drive axle, the front axle. Um, there was a conflict there, and I didn't realize that in time. Uh, I didn't read the instructions, but it came with a, a small cap. And so we'll put that in here instead to seal that hole. Instructions said, well, yeah, just spin this back in there when it's time to service the, the, the ball joint. And I thought, yeah, right, like that's going to happen. Um, but I'll, uh, I'll throw them in the glove box. So I guess if, I, if it's not too much trouble to get to when I do that, I can screw it in, put some grease in there, and then uh, take it back out, replace the plug. But realistically, I don't see that happening. It's a funny little plug. It's not a metric or a standard. The closest fit I could get is a quarter inch on it, and that doesn't fit very well. But that's fine. It's a very tiny little, tiny little guy, so it's not going to use take much force. So that's it. Well, uh, obviously the new kit comes with uh, new nuts, new castle nut, and a new cotter pin, and we'll uh, use those when we put it back together. Well, that's it. I'm not going to go uh, bring you along for the reinstall because it's kind of redundant. Simply just put it back the way uh, that we installed it and it should go back together. And I hope this video is helpful for anyone who finds himself wanting to do something like this. But more important than this particular job, I want to stress the point that you know, don't be afraid to take on projects yourself. Just be, it's, it's, uh, the world has, tells us and every, it tells us that everything has become so specialized that uh, they say, oh, well, if you're not an architect, you shouldn't be fooling around with trying to remodel your home. Or if you're not a mechanic, you know, you need to let, you need to let a professional do that. I, I, I reject that. Um, it, things are just getting too expensive. It's getting too difficult to make a living. It's uh, just crazy what things cost. And the only way we're going to make it is to become self-reliant once again. Like our our grandfathers, you know, we're not we're not that far removed from our grandfathers. You know, my grandfather is in his 90s, and and he when he was a kid, there really weren't any cars around. You know, it was horse and buggy days, and we need to get back to that self reliance, that that uh, and stop depending upon someone else to do everything for us. And um, it's not so important to have the skills. It's more so it's more important to have the attitude, the attitude of, well, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to do it. Uh, get yourself some books. We live in the information age. Uh, there's no excuse. Uh, not It's so easy to get uh, any information you need to do any type of project like this. I mean, with the internet, you have the world at your fingertips. It's just a matter of uh, um, sucking it up and just get it done. And, you know, think about uh, how much money you save. And, and, you know, this might come in handy sometime. Uh, you find yourself out in the middle of nowhere or or to help a friend or whatever. Uh, there's just a thousand good reasons to dig in and, and to get your hands greasy and do something like this. Um, and for, for your self-respect and, and impress your, your uh, pansy, pansy friends who are too afraid to take on uh, projects or do anything themselves. 
Um, thanks for watching, and I'll uh, I'll see you in the next one. I gotta get this installed and back on the road. See you later.